in this code as you can see that every time the low actually depicts uh, we are updating the value of low the value of high and the value of mid so how the values are being updated using this so when uh, we started with the first one let's assume that we are trying to find uh, element 37 okay so initially when we're trying to find 37 the array middle okay is 45 wow why this array middle is 45 because low which is 0 and high which is 8 is average to 4 and array 4 is 45 so this is the first case now es 37 it is less than array middle okay that is this is less than 45 the value of high which was initially 8 it will be middle minus 1 so middle was 4 so middle minus 1 it will be 3 so the new value of high will be 3 so this will be our new last or high okay and then let's go for the next one so what happened in this case the first one we compared this 45 with 37 that is array middle why array middle is 30 45 because the average that is low plus high divided by 2 equals to 4 and array 4 is 45 then if uh, 37 is less than array middle the value of high which is it which was 8 is updated to middle minus 1 so what was middle it was 4 so 4 minus 1 it will be 3 so the value of high will be 3 okay so now the value of for low or the first is 0 the value of high is 3 and then we will again calculate the value of middle every case so let's see in the next slide how we calculate the new value of middle so now as the value of high is 3 and the value of low is 0 the value of middle will be 0 plus 3 divided by 2 equals to 1 so the new middle is 37 and again uh, we compare uh, array middle that is 35 with 37 and obviously they are not equal next case we compare whether 37 is large than array middle so is 37 large than um, small than 35 no right so this one is also discarded this one is also discarded or not true but is 37 larger than array middle yes 37 is larger than 35 so what we do we update the value of low which was initially zero now it becomes middle plus one and what was the value of middle it was one right so it becomes one plus one equals to 2. So the new value of low is equal to 2. The value of high is 3. And then again, we have to calculate the value of middle. So after this, if we calculate the value of middle, that is 2 plus 3, it becomes 2. So now, as you can see, the array middle, which is 2, is equal to 37. So we are, we are done here. And that's how it actually exists. Okay. And now in the code, we just do the same thing. We first start a while loop. The while loop keep going on until low equals to uh, uh, the value of low is less than equals to high and the number mid not equals to search value. That means as long as we don't find the search value and the lower index and higher index are not equal. Sorry, or uh, the higher index is not less than the low index. We keep running the loop. And again, we keep updating the values. That's just the way we have shown in the implementation. And after all this while loop, okay, when this is all done, okay, if the low index is greater than high index, okay, that means we actually we ha we haven't been able to found, uh, we haven't been able to find the values, and our search algorithm has failed. We couldn't find the items. So whenever sometimes you search something random, Google's return you that this item could not be found. That means you have searched all this, and then they couldn't find the items. And in this way, our binary search algorithm work. What is the best case in the binary first is the one comparison that means the item is in the middle and you are instantly found the item so and if i go for the last slide the best case will be that you are looking for 45 and in the first search you have found 45 so this is the best case and the worst case is the log 2 to the power n comparison that means if the size of the array is 8 you need to do three comparison. If the size of the array is uh, 16, you need to do four comparison. So this is actually much, much more faster than the linear search. Uh, without uh, going to technical, let's just see this array. In the linear search, or li if the array size is 10, okay, the performance is 10, but in the binary, it takes four. And if the array size is 50, in the linear, it takes 50, but in the binary, it takes only six. So if I compare, 
if the array size is 10,000 in the linear search, it will take 10,000, but 10,000 second. But in the binary search, it will take only 14 seconds. Just imagine one algorithm is taking 10,000 second or 10,000 hour and another algorithm is just taking 14 second or 14 hour. So obviously binary search is very, very much efficient, useful and so on. And that's why we actually learned this binary search so well. And I have shown you already shown you the code. So try to practice uh, this on your own. And if you stuck somewhere, uh, let me know. So today we'll finish here. The important difference uh, will, with the important difference between these two. In the binary search, one problem is the input data needs to be sorted in the binary search. But in the linear search, it doesn't have to be sorted. Linear search does not, uh, does the sequential access, whereas the binary search data randomly. Time complexity of linear search is order of n. In the binary search, it's order of log n. So these are the some important cases you must me memorize and must remember. And linear search performs equality comparisons and binary search performs watering comparison. So basically in linear search, you just go by one by one, but in the uh, binary search, you look for the position that where it might be, where it might be in the order. And this is the key difference in terms of complexity, in terms of excess and in the order of data. And next class, we'll start with the bubble sort algorithm.